For 25 years, we have been Indiana's business news leader. This is IBJ Media's Inside Indiana Business with Gary Dick. Presented by Elevate Ventures and Indiana University. Indiana's economy clicking on all cylinders. Billions of dollars in investments in the works, but big changes coming at the state agency charged with driving Indiana growth. What it could mean for future projects. Honoring the best and brightest leaders across the state, we salute the women and men who landed on IBJ Media's Indiana 250 list. And something to tickle your sweet tooth, we cool down at Indiana's hottest ice cream spots. Hello and welcome to Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick. The Indiana Economic Development Pipeline well, has been flowing at a record level with more than $30 billion in capital investment commitments in the past six quarters. More is on the way, too, as the state prepares for an economic development leadership change. Among the highlights of the state's robust deal flow, Eli Lilly and Company breaking ground on the largest project in company history a $3.7 billion manufacturing campus at the new Leap Innovation District in Lebanon with plans to add 700 jobs. Meantime, seven microelectronics companies have committed to invest in Indiana, including Skywater Technology, with plans for a $1.8 billion facility and 750 jobs at Purdue's Discovery Park. Indiana is also motoring into the nation's transition to electric vehicles, GM and Samsung SDI committing to a more than $3 billion EV battery plant in New Carlisle with 1,700 jobs. Intech has plans for a $1.5 billion lithium battery facility in Terre Haute with more than 600 jobs, and Stellantis and Samsung SDI with plans for a $2.5 billion EV battery plant and 1,400 jobs in Kokomo. Indiana also plugging into the nation's energy transition Israel-based Doral Renewables continuing to build out what is on track to be the nation's largest solar array in Stark and Pulaski counties. Meantime, BP is eyeing a multi-billion dollar investment at its massive refinery in Whiting to produce clean hydrogen, an energy source that is the focus of state efforts to become one of the nation's hydrogen hubs. And speaking of transition, the man who has led the state's economic development efforts, Secretary of Commerce Brad Chambers, is stepping down after fulfilling his two-year commitment to Governor Holcomb. He tells me the deal pipeline is far from empty. Somewhere close to $100 billion of industry continues to look and evaluate Indiana and all the great attributes of this state. Uh, and so, you know, it's not going to be, it's not going to surprise me at all that, that uh, the, heat sh the hits just keep on coming here over the next few months, uh, even into next year. One of Chambers' key strategies, creation of state-sponsored mega sites, the first being the more than 10,000-acre Leap Innovation District in Lebanon, which landed Lilly's $3.7 billion manufacturing campus and is envisioned as the anchor of a 63-mile hard-tech corridor linking downtown Indianapolis and Purdue's West Lafayette campus. The ink wasn't even dry on that thing, and, and, and $3.7 billion from Eli Lilly one of our most important life sciences companies in the largest in their state history. So I'm optimistic, you know, and remember, that's not a two year strategy. That's a 22 year strategy uh, or more. And I just think it's going to be the heartbeat of central Indiana. Chambers says he is leaving his post energized by what he is seeing around the state. There is talent and passion and innovation and an aspiration for more and better in our state. And I'm just leaving 24 months of Secretary of Commerce um, fulfilled and, and confident that there is more in our future, can be more in our future, should be more in our future um, from an income perspective, from an economic growth perspective, from a quality of life perspective. As for his next move, Chambers does not rule out a run for governor, which has been widely speculated. I don't think the service component uh, from, of, of my life will ever uh, be diminished and, and so but but right now I am I am 100% focused on running through the tape here in, in the next two or three weeks making sure we're uh, we leave the place um, uh, better than we found it and uh, and then what comes after that we'll have to give it some thought and consideration 
Will he or won't he? The betting money seems to be on him getting in the race, but we'll see. Well, ahead, new energy coming to an oldie but goodie in Marion. Find out what's next for the former RCA Thompson plant there and the impact it could have on the region. Plus. We have one honoree who is a former police officer and delivered a baby in a snowstorm. IBJ Media CEO, publisher, and co-owner Nate Feltman uh, with the backstory on Indiana Chamber President Kevin Brenniger, one of the 250 Hoosiers honored on this year's Indiana 250 list. Congratulations to uh, you, Gary, for 25. Can't wait for the next 25 and feel so grateful that you made your way from Clinton, Indiana and uh, understood that there was a lot of success going on around the state in terms of economic development, workforce development. You've covered it all, my friend, and so, so appreciative that you've done it and committed uh, your career to it. We're better off because of you. The IBJ's Indiana 250 list, it's a tip of the hat, a high five to those Hoosier business and community leaders who are making a big impact in their cities and towns throughout the state. Now, if you want to make the list, IBJ Media CEO, publisher, and co-owner Nate Feltman has some advice. One key thing, one element that we always look for is that they're highly engaged in their community and somehow in, in making their community better, community building, bringing, bringing others along in their community. And, and lead in that regard. Here's what's making news around Indiana, brought to you by the Indiana Association of Realtors, Indiana's 21,000 realtors, the neighbors you know, the experts you can count on. Well, in this week's Around Indiana segment, we showcase two IBJ 250 honorees, one with a knack for landing deals in Southeast Indiana, the other leading the next generation of lawyers at Notre Dame. Mary Rachel Redman with their stories. Marcus Cole was named the 11th Dean of Notre Dame Law School in 2019, and his tenure in South Bend has been nothing short of remarkable. And while his list of accomplishments is many to say the least, Cole says he's most proud of establishing his groundbreaking religious liberty initiative that he says is more pertinent now than ever. A lot of the discussion in our country right now, um, particularly in the polarized politics, is um, uh, people view um, freedom of religion and religious freedom and freedom of conscience as um, as a, a device that has been used to to uh, infringe upon civil rights. But the truth is that religious freedom itself is a civil right, and um, and we have to we have to find a balance between religious freedom and other uh, civil rights uh, when they when they do come into conflict. I felt that as the the leading Catholic law school in the United States, uh, Notre Dame shouldn't just be in that conversation. We should be leading that conversation. We should be the place where people turn to for um, clarity and for hope when it comes to uh, the the issues of religious freedom in our country. Another Hoosier making things happen, Wendy Dant Chesser, president and CEO of One Southern Indiana. From attracting new businesses to fueling major growth in the region, the veteran economic leader says the future is bright in Southern Indiana. I just read an economist report on this local area and we're not seeing any signs that 2023 is gonna show us a recession or what it, the, the, the terminology of the soft landing We've, we've been very soft in our landing. Uh, we're still seeing industrial growth. We're still seeing housing growth. We're still seeing population growth and all of the services that support all of that from retail or commercial services, et cetera. As we, as we round out what this, the, the, the 2023 will mean, I can only be hopeful that 2024 and some of the, the projects we have in the pipeline will add fuel and accelerant to that flame that's already that's already burning bright. Well, let's get you caught up now on other news making business headlines around the state. New use with a clean energy twist for the former RCA Thompson plant in Marion. Fishers-based Ray Element Technologies 
taking over the campus to create a rare earth and battery refining facility, which will focus on recycling end-of-life products like lithium batteries. A longtime Northern Indiana water sports equipment company could soon have a new owner, Bart's Water Sports, which has been a fixture in North Webster for more than 50 years, set to go on the auction block in September. Growth for an Indiana company with ties to the entertainment industry, Tyler Trust Systems in Pendleton, which makes truss structures for concerts, has purchased Indianapolis-based McGuire Scenic. Coming up next, how a made in Indiana product to keep hearing aids dry is turning up the volume among the younger generation and those who use AirPods. We have one honoree who, a uh, female who was a, a place kicker, in fact, a record tying place kicker for uh, her county or her high school uh, football team. Yet another IBJ 250 honoree, Kristen Marcaselli, president of Star Financial. Well, Eli Lilly and Company is making a big move to get into on the fast-growing weight loss industry. Lilly spending nearly $2 billion, that's B as in billion, to buy obesity drug maker Versanus. It's a biopharma company based out of Boston. Lilly with an eye on a Versanus antibody being used in a clinical study to treat adults who are overweight. Well, the business landscape for hearing aids drastically changed when they became available over the counter late last year. It is expected to turn up the volume on business for Fishers-based Redux. The small company has been selling hearing aid dryers to professional clinics for nearly five years and is now expanding to a larger audience. Business of Health reporter Kylie Valletta has more. Thanks, Gary. About 2,400 audiology clinics already have this professional version of the hearing aid dryer, and now the small company is launching a home version that Redux hopes will take the market by storm. In a matter of days, Redux will begin shipping its very first home dryers. Moisture is a major problem for hearing aids, which are actually tiny electronics. People quit using their hearing aids because they stop working. And the reason they stop working is because they get wet. Redux president Ruben Zelensky says the tight space of the hearing canal is high humidity, creating condensation or water that over time collects inside the hearing aid and little by little dampens the sound. It's amazing when you dry these and they put them back in the ears, they can't believe it. They got to turn their volume down and they say, wow, it's so much clearer. It's really, really cool to see. Select from three drying modes. The company has sold thousands of dryers to professional audiology clinics, but wanted to make a home version for the masses, especially as hearing aids are now available over the counter. So basically what this is doing is it's pushing air around through this chamber. And th Redux engineers developed the smaller dryers, which use a tiny fan and what's called a desiccant, a drying agent that absorbs water. The dryer essentially bakes the moisture out of the hearing aids, a completely different method compared to home hearing aid dryers already on the market. We've tested all the home dryers, the competition. They're very inexpensive and they just don't work. We've tested them in our lab here behind me. Redux uses equipment in its lab to measure how much moisture is in the hearing aid before and after using a dryer and says it's the only one on the market that dries the devices completely. And this is for everyone, because this is not just hearing aids. This is good for hearing devices uh, like AirPods, digital for digital music players, the Bose ear earbuds, Samsung earbuds. All of those can be dried in this. The dryer is currently $400, but the company hopes to reduce the price as sales volume grows. Helping people hear better, uh, bringing better hearing to the world. I think that's an awesome thing. This is where Redux will be assembling the first batch of home dryers. The company says it already has 50 pre-orders, and that's without advertising. Gary, back to you. All right, Kylie, thank you. Well, a state of higher education in Indiana at a critical juncture. That according to WGU Indiana President Allison Bell. She's my guest on this week's Business and Beyond podcast. 
Bell grew up around higher ed, her dad a well-respected professor at Ball State. She's been running the show at WGU here in Indiana for four years and had an interesting outlook on the current state of higher education. If universities don't make critical changes to how they focus, who they're focusing on serving and how they serve their students, then we will see especially smaller universities close, which which I, I don't want to see happen. Much more with WGU Indiana President and Muncie native Allison Bell on the next in, uh, Business and Beyond podcast. You can check it out starting Monday at InsideIndianaBusiness.com. Coming up next, the hottest spots to cool off in Indiana with a dip of ice cream. We'll show you where they are and what makes them so special. And more intel from Nate Feltman on some of the honorees on this year's IBJ Indiana 250 list. We have somebody who played golf with Mickey Mantle. We have somebody who's been to 59 500 Indianapolis 500 races in a row. We will put a bow on our Indiana 250 coverage when we come back. The ice cream truck. For many of us, it was game on when we heard that sound. Time to take a break from a hot, steamy Indiana summer day of play to buy a push-up drumstick or ice cream sandwich. Well, we're staying with that uh, spirit of summertime go-to and the Indiana businesses cashing in on ice cream this month. Yelp's Brittany Smith joins us now from a sweet tooth hot spot in downtown Indianapolis with this month's Trendiana. Brittany. Thanks, Gary. Well, there's never a wrong time to have ice cream, but just in time for National Ice Cream Month, we've rounded up five of the top rated spots across the state of Indiana on Yelp. We're kicking things off here at Lick, located in the Bottle Works District along Mass Ave in downtown Indy. This business has been around for 13 years, owned by the sister duo of Meredith and Kelly, and they've been turning out creative flavors ever since the day they started. They use really creative ingredients, and you'll find flavors here that you won't find anywhere else in the state, like their honey lavender flavor, their ginger snap lemon curd, and they're constantly rotating the flavors to give you a reason to come back. They also put a lot of passion into each ingredient. So you'll see that they're making the cookies from scratch and every other ingredient you find in each of the scoops. They recently opened up a location along the Monon Trail in Sobero, giving you a great chance to hit the trail and take a pit stop there. Next up, we're heading to TJ's along West 86th Street. This business is ironically owned by two dental hygienists. And one of our inside tips is if you see the long line in the drive-thru, don't let it scare you away. It moves quickly and it's definitely worth the wait. Folks love that they have over 16 flavors on rotation and you have to try their donut ice cream sandwiches and their fruity pebble sandwiches as well. They're also known for their caramel hot fudge sundaes. It's a really fun spot to check out if you find yourself along West 86th Street. Next up, we're heading to the heart of downtown Elkhart to the Vanilla Bean Creamery. They now have three locations throughout the state of Indiana. Before kicking off the business, this mother-daughter duo of owners went to ice cream boot camp to get all the inside knowledge before starting their business. Or no, not only for their 23 rotating flavors, but also their special order ice cream pies and cakes. So be sure to check those out when you find yourself in Elkhart. If you are looking for the ultimate farm to cone experience, head to Zionsville for the Trader's Point Creamery. Not only are they known for their delicious ice cream, but the entire experience that you get when you're there. So you can hit the trail and go through their fields of the cows to see where the cream and milk is actually made. And then you can see the cows being milked in the evening hours in the lower level of their barn. Their dairy bar has beautiful views overlooking the property. And Yelpers love that they really get the basics of the vanilla and chocolate. So try those first and then explore all their other great flavors. Last but certainly not least, we're heading to Polly's Freeze in southern Indiana, the town of Georgetown. You have been around for over 70 years, and Yelpers can't get enough of the 1950s nostalgia that you'll find there, not only in the atmosphere, but the menu. They offer up dishes like sherbets and malts and chocolate-dipped bananas. You'll also find some hot dishes on their menu as well. They rotate their ice cream flavors frequently, as well as their sherbets, giving you plenty of reasons to visit and visit again this summer. Well, Gary, we hope you got a lot of inspiration for your summer of ice cream and that you celebrate National Ice Cream Month in style. Great stuff. Thanks, Brittany. I am definitely in the mood for ice cream now. Great report. 
Well, as we end this week's show, we want to uh, once again salute those Indiana businesses and community leaders who made this year's IBJ Media Indiana 250 list. Thanks for joining us this week. I'm Gary Dick. Go out and make it a successful week. IBJ Media's Indiana 250 list. It represents every nook and cranny in Indiana. They all have unique stories, tidbits you may not know. For example, the man running Indiana's largest healthcare system, IU Health President and CEO Dennis Murphy. He spent his teenage years in the seminary and thought the priesthood might be his calling. Being kind of spiritually centered, uh, and it was uh, a wonderful uh, place to be during a very formative time in everybody's life. Your high school years are really yeah. important and, and it definitely made me who I am today. The woman in charge of one of the state's largest and most popular cultural institutions, Colette Pierce Burnett. She jumped at the chance to go for the top job at Newfields in Indianapolis. I have such a passion for um, equity mm -hmm. and justice and um, education as the great equalizer. So that made, I saw this as such an opportunity for Newfields to do some really wonderful things with, it's just a magical yeah. place. And then there's Ball State University President Jeff Mearns, a slam dunk to make the Indiana 250 list, especially with his background in prosecuting the mob. We had a great run there from about 89 to about 1997 in prosecuting traditional organized crime. And my most of my cases dealt with the Gambino organized crime family, which is the largest, uh, most uh, uh, dangerous organized yeah. crime family in the, in the history of the United States. A sampling of three Indiana business leaders who made the IBJ Indiana 250 list, all sharing that Hoosier can-do state of mind. To check out the other 247 on the list, go to indiana250.com.